Hi and welcome to this tutorial on measuring relative masses. So in the previous tutorial we learnt about electron configurations, so we learnt about the S, P and D subshells mostly, we learnt how to write them out and about how to do them for ions as well. So in this tutorial we're going to be looking at relative masses, so we're going to look at some definitions that you need to learn by heart calculating the relative atomic mass and calculating the relative molecular and relative formula masses too. So there are some definitions that you need to learn for this. We need to understand what a unified atomic mass number is, and we need to understand what some of these shortcuts are. So relative atomic masses, molecular masses, isotopic mass and formula mass too. Let's jump right in then and we'll have a look at what our relative atomic masses are. So we've got two elements here. We've got carbon and we've got copper. So let's look in more detail about what these numbers mean. So our relative atomic mass, often notified as A with a sort of subscript R, is the average mass of an atom of an element relative to one twelfth of the mass of an atom of carbon 12. And you need to learn that definition by heart so you can regurgitate it all the time. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but you can't be missing any of those phrases. So it's the average mass of an atom of an element relative to one twelfth of the mass of an atom of carbon 12. And carbon is used as the standard um, to which the relative masses of other elements are compared. I always get students ask me, why don't they pick oxygen? Why don't they pick hydrogen? Um, it's relatively stable. There's lots of reasons why it's very abundant. Um, so they, they picked carbon. We just have to accept that. Um, and carbon itself has got a relative atomic mass of 12. If we have a look at what unified atomic mass, so this is the reference unit of mass used to measure relative masses, and it corresponds to one twelfth of the mass of a neutral carbon-12 atom. So looking at our copper here, that is not carbon, it's copper, the relative atomic mass, or the AR, of an element can be found on the periodic table, of course, I'm sure you've done this when we're doing GCSEs, and we're looking at the number, and Sometimes people say directly above the elemental symbol. Like I said, do not get too attached to where that number's positioned. It's the larger number of the two you're given. Sometimes they're flipped and they put the relative atomic mass underneath the um, atomic number. So you need to be aware that it is the larger number of the two. So in this particular case, the relative atomic mass of copper is 63.5, if I was to round that. And people always wonder... When they first start this topic, you know, how on earth can we have decimal amounts um, of mass? Well, we'll have a look at that in more detail shortly. The relative molecular mass, which unsurprisingly is MR, M for the molecule instead of A for the atom, is the average mass of a molecule relative to one twelfth of the mass of an atom of carbon-12. So quite a similar definition, but slightly different. And you need to know the difference between the relative atomic mass and the relative molecular mass. So it's just the average mass of a molecule relative. So it's the sum of the relative atomic masses of each atom within the molecule. So at GCSE, you would have had a go at this. So I've got three molecules here. They're diatomic. So I'm going to consider the fact that the relative atomic mass of nitrogen is 14. And this atomic mass of this nitrogen is 14. So the relative molecular mass overall is 28. For chlorine, 35.5. Each one is 35.5, each atom. So if we add the relative atomic masses of the atoms together, we get the relative um, molecular mass. So we'll get 71. And oxygen is 16 and 16. So overall, the relative molecular mass of molecular oxygen is 32. Then we have the relative isotopic mass. So this is the mass of an atom of an isotope relative to one twelfth of the mass of, of an atom of carbon-12. So that last bit doesn't change too much. So it's the mass of an atom of an isotope. And you can see here, um, oxygen's got three isotopes. We've got oxygen 16, 17, 18. Nitrogen's got three isotopes and carbon. We've got carbon-12, carbon-13 and carbon-14. So each of these individual numbers is the relative isotopic mass. So the relative isotopic mass of carbon-14 is 14. And we can have a look at some versions of hydrogen here. So remember, this was in a previous tutorial. We've got protium, we've got deuterium, and we've got tritium. And we can also notify these, if we give them notation, would be H1, 
H2 and H3. Now I am habitually putting the mass number above in the top left-hand corner, and that's giving me the relative isotopic mass, not the relative atomic mass, that is the averages. These are different for each individual isotope. Here we are at relative formula mass. So these are molecules, we also call it relative formula mass because we've got different types of atoms involved. So we've got an oxygen and carbon. We've got oxygen and hydrogen here. So we're gonna add them together and I'm sure you remember this from GCSE. So 16, 12, 16. So we're gonna add those together and that would give us our relative formula mass. And for this, we would have 16, 16 and one. So 16 plus 16, plus one. Now that one I can do very quickly in my head, 33. So the relative formula mass of water. So I just showed you the relative formula mass is the sum of the relative atomic masses of the atoms in the formula unit of a compound. It's very obvious with molecules like carbon dioxide and water, they are simple molecular structures. For structures like sodium chloride, which are giant ionic lattices, we simplify it down to one unit, so NaCl, so effectively like an empirical formula. So we'd add the relative atomic mass of uh, sodium and one chlorine, despite the fact that actually the structure is never ending, they're all attached to each other. You'll see that when you're given a relative atomic mass, that is an average of the isotope. So it will often come across as a decimal number, whereas relative isotopic masses, they are usually given as whole numbers. So you can either have the isotope of chlorine of 35 or chlorine 37. Remember from a previous tutorial, when we're wanting to calculate the relative atomic mass, it is it has to include two factors. We need the isotopes and we need the relative abundances of those isotopes. Then we can do a little bit of maths and it will give us our relative atomic mass. So first of all, as it says here, we're going to multiply the relative isotopic abundances by the mass of each isotope. Then we're going to divide by 100 or we're going to divide by the sum of the abundances. You need to check your y-axis. Then do a sense check because that number should fall between the isotope values you have. So you saw in the previous slide, we had chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. The relative atomic mass of chlorine should be a number between 35 and 37. And it is, it's 35.5. Let's have a quick go at an example. So pause the video and give it a go yourself or wait for my work through. So using the information given here, I am going to do my isotopic mass times my abundance. I'm going to pretend I've got 100 of these. So 75 of them would be chlorine 35. So that's going to give me a number. And then I'm going to add the mass of my chlorine 37 times its abundance, which is 25% or 25. And that's going to give me a value. So 3,000. 550. And the last step is just to do 3,550 divided by the total, which is 100% in this case. So just divided by 100. And that is 35.5. And then I'm going to sense check that number should lie between these two values. And 35.5 does. And also considering 75% of it is, is chlorine 35, I'd expect the number to be closer to 35 than 37. And 35.5 certainly is. So in terms of sense, it makes sense. To calculate the relative molecular mass or the relative formula mass, just add up the relative atomic masses of each atom, with, atom within the molecule. And you've done that quite a lot at GCSE, I'm sure. So pause the video and have a go, a reminder here. So the relative, well, first of all, we need to get the formula. So of course, it's H2O. Then we're writing down the elements present. So we've got H and O and their relative atomic masses. H is 1 and O is 16. And then we've got to add them all together. So we've got two H's. So we're going to do two times the relative atomic mass. So two times one plus 16, one of my oxygens. And of course, we're going to end up with 18. 